Young cat got back, did a little bit. Now we hardy, puffy, tough, do rag and tunes. Kinda hard to get a job. Back out on the block, charge that to the game. Young girl, she grew up in a rush. Had it bad, no doubt. She don't know who to trust. Every man she ever loved only wanna crush. Charge that to the game. Thank you. Good afternoon. And welcome to Expose Under the Sun, brought to you by the Detroit Native Sun newspaper. And I am your guest host, Darwin Griffin, filling in for Sharon Dumas. And I am very pleased today to have two special guests that are doing so much work in this great state of Michigan. One is doing more so on a local level, and the other one is doing something on a statewide level. But my first guest that I have, and again, our show is live, and our call-in numbers are area code 313-868-0342, 313-868-0351, or 868-4336. And our website is www.tv33whbr.com. And again, you are watching the great station. TV 33, WHBR, can be seen in Detroit, Highland Park, and other cities around the Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties. First, I'd like to go and ask everyone to welcome my special guest, and her name is Tanya Risa. Tanya, it is a very, very, I'm, I'm very honored to have you as a guest on my show today. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about now you're a member of the Michigan Democratic Party Progressive Caucus, correct? Yes. Can you tell our, our, our viewers and our listening audience a little bit about the Progressive Caucus? Sure. Um, so the Progressive Caucus is a caucus within the party, and uh, we, are, uh, we want to strongly advocate for certain what we believe are progressive issues. Mm -hmm. We believe that, um, for example, campaign finance is a big issue where um, corporations have a lot of influence on candidates, and we want to uh, support candidates that are coming up from the grassroots uh, who don't take any corporate money. That's one way in which we, um, we uh, operate. And um, we, also, um, we also really believe strongly in a more inclusive democracy, <coughs> and in advocating for socioeconomic and racial justice. Now, a lot of people, when they mention the term progressive, what does that mean? So we are actually trying to, um, we are currently working on a uh, definition for our caucus. But in general, um, right now, when uh, we talk about being progressive, we believe <coughs> in, again, a more inclusive democracy, in having um, a living wage for anyone that's uh, working for taking out, um, for removing the influence of uh, money in politics, mm -hmm. for um, advocating for strong criminal justice reform, for having a more, um, for, uh, for policies and policing that um, advocates for, uh, that takes into account bias, and also uh, making sure that um, everyone does get equal treatment under the law regardless of wealth <coughs> or race. Um, there are many, many issues. Medicare for all, we believe health care is a human right and um, we all are entitled uh, to health care. Uh, quality public education um, is another uh, thing, is something else we believe in, a strong social safety net. Um, so um, again, right now we see a great deal of uh, socioeconomic disparity. Um, and uh, injustice, and we also see, um, you know, and systems that um, do not treat everyone as being equal. Also, it's very important for me to mention, um, you know, for example, the undocumented community, you know, and what they're going through right now, and the, uh, the terrible suffering that's being inflicted on families at the border. Um, you know, also, in the past, for example, policies that have over time hurt um, Native communities, black communities, um, other communities of color, um, marginalized communities like the LGBTQI community, um, advocating for policies that will hopefully um, make these individuals and these communities give them a, a chance at the same uh, so, and give them the same socioeconomic opportunities that were um, 
given to other, um, to, for example, white people in this country. Okay, now, <clears throat> how long, when was the Progressive Party, when was that, or the Progressive Caucus, when was that originated? When did that start? I don't know. Um, it, I'm, not, I'm unsure of when uh, okay. the caucus started. I'm a new member. Okay. So, how long have you been a member? Uh, since 2017, since okay. the uh, um, the convention, the uh, the Democratic uh, Party convention in 2017, they elected um, new members to the caucus. Now, what what made you want to join the Progressive Caucus? Um, part of it has been um, I was involved with an organization called Michigan for Revolution. Okay. And um, this organization is an affiliate of Our Revolution, which is the larger national organization. Uh, we are kind of uh, we were we organized around the uh, platform of uh, when of Bernie Sanders when he ran for president. Um, again, advocating for greater representation, a more inclusive democracy, and um, socioeconomic and racial justice. So. so, so now, what is the comparison between you say it's called our revolution mm -hmm. and the progressive caucus? So, um, I think uh, the comparison. Well, our revolution is just a it's a national organization, and they um, right now I think their big um, what they're working on is endorsing candidates um, in races all over the country, and. Um, the Progressive Caucus also is um, in the process of endorsing candidates in Michigan, uh, candidates that reflect our values, candidates that um, do not take, for example, uh, corporate PAC money, candidates that are um, believe unequivocally in you know um, raising the minimum wage and see the injustices of past policies in in criminal justice and and other areas. Now, do you feel that? What what is the Progressive Caucus doing to pretty much like doing more of the GOTV, the get out to vote? Mm -hmm. Are they really trying to encourage, or what are you doing to try and encourage more, especially more young people, to mm -hmm. get out to vote? I think, um, I think again, advocating and talking about the issues is something that really appeals to younger voters. Um, a lot of um, people that have never been politicians are mm -hmm. now running um, all across the state, all across the country, and people who are... Why, um, do, you, why do you think that? Because a lot of people ask me that question. Yeah, and there yeah. seems to be a lot of young people yeah. now that are putting their hats in the race for mayor, mm -hmm. for city council, for state rep, for state senate, you know. So why, why do you think a lot of young people are doing that today? I think we took, um, my generation probably took it for granted that um, it would all be in some ways it would all be okay, you know, <clears throat> and that you sort of, uh, you know, politics was always looked at as the presidential election, right. whereas we're kind of realizing, no, it's politics is local. It's a lot of um, these local races, a lot of these, um, you know, decisions that happen locally that can um, provide a model for, um, for the nation and for, you know, the state. And um, I think people are seeing that, again, because it's starting locally, people are working a lot more locally um, and also need to be at the table uh, to uh, represent their communities and their issues. So are there any particular initiatives or issues that the Progressive Caucus is really pushing in this upcoming election, in the midterm election? I think, um, I don't know about a specific issue, but I think one of the uh, strong stances we have taken is that we refuse to endorse any candidates that are taking corporate PAC money. Okay. So that's where we draw our, our line, for example. So that may touch upon the candidates, but is right. there any issues particularly? Because I know there's mm -hmm. a lot of like the um, for a one fair wage oh, yes, or yeah. for the mm -hmm. initiative with trying to raise the minimum wage up yeah. to $15 an hour. Yeah, yeah. And then also there's also the uh, issue when it comes down to legalizing mm -hmm. recreational marijuana. So right, I mean, is there right. anything in particular out of those three or if there's mm -hmm. others that mm -hmm. you, you know, that the Progressive Caucus is really pushing? We're not pushing any one issue as a caucus, but okay. I think individually, for example, we're involved with different um, initiatives. Okay. Yeah. So some people are also involved with the marijuana legalization right. and some people are involved with the uh, get out the vote. Some people are, are um, have participated in the one fair wage um, campaign. So. So if you had to pretty much like give a specific as to 
trying to get more people to join the mm -hmm. Progressive yeah. Caucus. What is the, is there a website or is there a phone number that yes. they can get in contact with? And, and we'll do a shout out right. to your chairperson and to your, um, your vice chair. Sure. Can you mention their name so that we sure. can shout out? Um, our chairperson is uh, Kelly Collison and our vice chair is Eamon Kafaji. Um, and our website is www.progressivecaucusmdp.org. Now, where are you based out of? Are you based locally, like in the Wayne County area? Are you in Lansing, or what, what area? Are you so we have two representatives from each congressional district. Okay. So I represent, I'm one of the two representatives of the 12th congressional district. Oh, okay. Who's the other one? Uh, we'll Subi Raman. Ra yeah, out. sure. Okay. Subi Raman. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so now the two of you represent the 12th. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me, do you have representatives in the 13th and the 14th? Yes, we do. Can you, do you know who those members are? Sure. Um, I can't recall the names of those in the 13th, but in the 14th, uh, the newly elected representatives are Will and Teresa Gallivan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that you would like to say in our closing you know, minute as to why people should want to be a part of the Michigan Democratic Party Progressive mm -hmm. Caucus? Well, um, yes. I think... Uh, in order for us to um, have our voices represented, for far too long we've been, um, you know, we've been kind of assuming it's something that's taken care of. Okay. Um, the party has made decisions regarding who's running, and um, you know, which voices are amplified, which voices are representing the people. We need to be part of that decision. We okay. need to be the ones choosing who's representing us. And um, and the va and make sure that they align with our values. All right. So. Okay. Well, I do thank you for coming and being a guest. On thank our show you. Today. Thank you for having and me. And I, I pray that all of the initiatives and the candidates that you are supporting are going to be successful in the upcoming election. Thank you so much. Really appreciate that. Tanya, thank you for coming in. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much. Well, thank you. Bye. -bye. bye. Definitely want to thank you for continuing to stay with us and to get an opportunity to go and have a chance to hear my second special guest on the show. And her name is Veronica Armstead. Veronica, it's a pleasure to have you on the show this afternoon. Thank you, Darwin. It's a pleasure to be here. And, and, and you represent the Warndale Warriors Radio Patrol. Is yes, I do. Yes, I do. Can you tell our viewing audience and our listening audience a little bit about what does the Warndale Warriors Radio Patrol, what do they do? We are the eyes and the ears of the uh, police department. We work very closely with the 6th Precinct. Uh, police precinct and uh, we scout the area. Our area covers from Ford Road to Joy Road and from Southfield to Trinity, which is a very large area. We have 14 active members right now and uh, we are constantly looking for new members. But what we do is we report uh, unsavory behavior, uh, we report blight, uh, if we see a crime in progress, that is something that we would report to a 911 dispatcher. We never engage uh, with anyone, with criminals or anything like that. We stay in the car, but we do report situations that are going on in our community. Now, are you in your own respective cars, or do you have patrol cars that have some kind of identification on it that you are patrol members? Well, that's a very good question. You no, know, we, we do have our own cars. Uh, we, we do volunteer our own our service. Uh, this is strictly a volunteer service. There is a monetary uh, reimbursement for mileage, uh, if you will, but for the most part, the people who are involved in the radio patrol are those who are people who care about their community and are trying to take the community back from uh, crime and the elements of crime. So now, if a person does not live in that catchment area that you mentioned earlier, can they still be a member of your patrol? Yes, 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 you can. Uh, our, 
all patrols are allowed, we're allotted 20% of our membership does not have to live in the area in order to be part of the radio patrol. And there's over 120, uh, about 124 radio patrols throughout the city of Detroit. Yes. So if someone sees something that, that's going on, that's a, um, some kind of indiscretion in their neighborhood, yeah. what are the steps that they have to take or that patrol person has to take at that point? You know, what, what, there's no engagement, like you said, right. in the person that may be perpetrating whatever it is right. that's going on. Right. But you just go and do what then at that point? Well, we, we work with radios. We're issued radios by the city of Detroit. Uh, we're allotted, uh, depending on how many people you have in your patrol, we have six radios. And when we go out... Is on that enough radios to patrol that well, area? Uh, well, as I said, we have... How it works out is we have a base operator. Okay. That is a person who calls the police station and lets the station know, okay, we have a car out right now. Now, there's always two people in the car. There must be a driver and an observer. Okay. They're issued a radio, and the base operator has a radio. So how many patrols are usually out per given night? Well, we've had, we've had patrols going out every day, uh, some during the day, some during the evening. Uh, it, there is no limitation. Uh, you can have as many or as, as as little as, you know, it's really about the volunteers and what they can do. Okay. Um, most of my patrollers have jobs. They have eight to five jobs. But yet and still, they still go out from seven to nine. They patrol the area. Uh, we have some people who are retired, who, uh, who are uh, able to go out during the day, and that suits them. So the age range is anywhere from as long, so is it, if you can drive a car? that you can be a patrol member or do you have to have a certain age limit that you would have to be? Well, well, yeah, you do have to be 18 unless otherwise uh, monitored by a parent or guardian. However, I must, I must mention that you do have to pass a screening from, the, my next question. Yeah, okay. from the Detroit Police Department. There's an application that you fill out. And that application is then sent over to the Detroit Police Department, which within 24 hours, they do a scan of your name and license. And if you pass, then you're allowed to be on a radio patrol. That, however, doesn't mean you go out immediately. There's still a training process you have to go through before you can go out with a partner on your own on a patrol. Can you tell what does that training process involve? Going out with a... Um, uh, a patrol that's already uh, been established already? Yes, yes. Okay. Going out with them on at least two occasions and learning what to look for, uh, learning how to identify uh, uh, criminal elements, suspicious characters. Uh, some patrollers are pretty much set on the blight situation in the community. And we have a, uh, we, our base operator reports issues to a C click fix. Uh, app which is start which was started by the mayor, and on what did you call it again? It's called C Click Fix. Okay. And what we do on there is we report there's been some blight laid out on the burb. There's been a tree that has fallen down after a storm. Um, we've composed also a 12 to 14 page list of homes that need to be boarded up in our area which has helped the mayor and his, um, his district managers in making sure that some homes got torn down, some have gotten boarded up. So it, it, that's been very useful as well. Can you give, now you've been a member of this patrol for how long? Four years. For four years. Mm -hmm. Can you give any instances that may have happened in the four years that you've been a member that may have kind of you know taxed you a little bit or you kind of looked and saw something that might have been where you were like, wow, I didn't believe that things like this could go on in your patrol or in the neighborhood? Well, it's actually, you know, you really don't know what's going on in your neighborhood until you get out. Okay. Uh, your scope, if you're the kind of person who's pretty much, it's none of my business, you stay at home, you're kind of in the house, and all you see is pretty much the houses around you, which is, you know, to your left, to your right, and in front of you, uh, you know, and if that seems okay to you, you probably don't know that two blocks down the street, you know, there's some kind of drug activity going on, that people are actually just blatantly selling drugs right out in the middle of the street like a lemonade stand. 
or that, you know, there's a group of young men who are actually uh, going around looking at cars to see, you know, which cars are unlocked so, mm -hmm. you know, they can break in or, or something like that or joyride. It takes a community working together to bring back its value. You know, we, we can't expect the city government or state government for that matter to do it all. We need to take control of our own environment. Now, do you ever have to go into court to also work with the prosecutor to prosecute someone that may have done something that was not correct in the neighborhood? We haven't had to do that as of yet. However, we are in the process. I have, uh, I have uh, uh, set up a, or I have actually requested for a grant uh, because I wanted to get a couple of cameras. Okay. Yeah, cameras for our vehicles, for our, our drivers that go out. So that that is also on record, not just what we write down, but actual visual right. on what we've seen out there uh, in, in cases of criminal elements. Yeah, because I could see where that camera would be really valuable because yeah. of the fact that it could be a he said, she said. Yeah. Or it's like taking your word against the perpetrator that may have been accused of doing something exactly and i'm sure you have situations where you may see people that may be doing something that may even live in that neighborhood yes and it's a matter of then you having to go and say something to someone uh and then that person let's say mother or father or relative could also be upset because yes. of the snitching right. policy that some right. people have. Right, right. So I guess the question that I'm just having too is that if um, if you can get the cameras, the cameras can pretty much like videotape. So that yes. really would be, and you say you're trying to apply for a grant yes. to be able to get about how many cameras would you be trying well, to solicit for? Well, right now we're we're trying to get at least two, at the very least two. Uh, we already have some signage in our area, but we would like to get more signage put up around the area. Like I said, we have a very vast area from Ford Road to Joy Road, Southfield to Trinity. It's, it's uh, about 10 miles. So we want to get signage up around the area, letting people know that there is a radio patrol out right. here, that there you are being watched. And also to let the community know that uh, you're not alone. Don't shiver in your homes scared to say anything there's there's more good people than there are bad and if we all band together we can bring back a community that we feel safe and comfortable in do you are you getting a lot of the support from a lot of the businesses that are existing in your area as well we have been working in the last year with uh, quite a few businesses on Warren uh, we have posters in over I would say about 25 businesses from Warren up to Joy Road uh, one particular business, uh, the Star Car Wash uh, uh, business on, located on Warren right off of Southfield has been very supportive of us, very supportive and has helped us in many ways. So we are, we are pleased to give them a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't even ask you to give them they a shout out. Even ask. Now, my, my last good question I want to ask, and it seems like our time is going by so fast with you and my previous guest, but if a person was interested in wanting to be a part of the Warrendale Warriors Radio Patrol, how would they make contact with you or with someone else to be a part of that awesome patrol? We, we do have a 1-800 number. Uh, it is 1-888-330-7488. Can you repeat that again? 1-888-330-7488. And if they would like to be a part of that awesome patrol, they can contact that number. Yes. And then they can get the particulars and get the, now you see there's an application process. Yes. They would also have to be screened by the. Detroit police. Detroit yes. police. Yes. Now, is there any, so if a person, let's say, for example, if they have a, some problems with their license, I mean, I know their license would have to be valid. Yeah. But. It doesn't matter in terms of say about whether or not if the person, let's say if they have a misdemeanor or something like that, is there a particular something, if it's a felony, if they have a felony, can they be a part of the patrol? Well, or? no, no, no. Um, the Detroit police has their own criteria on what they feel is uh, acceptable, acceptable a, okay. yes, for a patroller. Um, we, I mean, if you have tickets, outstanding tickets or something like that, we would, it would be red flagged. Okay. And we would, 
probably get something back saying, well, they could be a part of your patrol, but they can't drive a car. They right. have they have outstanding tickets. So that person. So they could be the person, maybe like the, the person riding in the car as yes. the observer. Yes, they could do that. Or could they also be the person that now you say you've got somebody that's like on the on the radio yes. that when they call in they would speak to somebody at yeah the at, base at a, operator a base operator yes yes okay. yes. And so now the other thing too is that when you find is there is there something that you can say just to our viewing audience. What would encourage, just something encouraging to encourage somebody to say, hey, I want to be a part of the Warrendale Warriors Radio Patrol. Can you look in our camera and, 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 and just make a pitch to the, you know, to somebody that's listening to say, I can't wait to call that 1-800 number. Well, I, I can tell you that uh, starting the patrol four years ago, our crime rate has gone down 12%. I have gotten to know many of my neighbors. I have gotten to know uh, my NPOs, which is my neighborhood police officers. I've know I, I've gotten to know the captain of the station. I've also uh, gone out on peace walks with my community, as well as do board ups and clean ups in the community. Our presence is well known, and I would encourage anybody to, uh, if not join our patrol, start a patrol, start a block club, get involved in your community. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> I really want to thank you, Veronica, thank for getting you. a chance to come on the show today. Thank you. And I also want to thank my other guests, Tanya Reyes, for coming on the show as well, too. But you have been watching Expose Under the Sun, which is brought to you by the Detroit Native Sun. And I am your guest host, Darwin Griffin. And if you'd like to be a guest on the show or you'd like to advertise in the Detroit Native Sun newspaper, that can now be picked up in, 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 in the majority of the Kroger supermarket locations. Call Valerie Lockhart at area code 313-457-5944. And we look forward to seeing you again next time, next week, same station, the awesome WHPR in Detroit, in Highland Park, that can be viewed. Again, my name is Darwin Griffin, and I'm substituting for Sharon Dumas. And again, be safe, be careful, and make certain, certain that you are a difference in your community because you want to make sure that somebody is watching you, they can help you, and be blessed. Kinda hard to get a job back out on the block. Charge that to the game. Young girl, she grew up in a rush. Had it bad, no doubt. She don't know who to trust. Every man she. Ever